Oh, wow. Oh, jeez. That was a hard place to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Coming up, we're going to give you a look into how some of the entrees are prepared. Mm, everything smells so good. Pick up a few crumbs from the cutting room floor and give you a taste of things to come out the kitchen for next season. That's straight ahead on Breaking Park. Struggle finding the perfect gift no matter the occasion? Well, struggle no more. Introducing the phone caddy from Desert Fox Golf. Have a sense of humor? Here you go. What's this? The best phone holder for golf, period. You have it by tomorrow, boss. Sucker. Got a present for you. Will it through my phone? Damn right, even if you have a phone case. Want to show support for first responders and military? DFG has you covered. Everyone has a cell phone, so stop overthinking your next gift idea and go to DesertFoxGolf.com. The World of Troon features some of the most remarkable golf experiences around the world. And with the 2022 Troon card, you can enjoy unforgettable Troon courses at the best rates. As a Troon card holder, reserve tee times within three days of your desired date of play and save up to 50% off golf fees at 150 participating courses. Plus, Troon card holders also receive great benefits like two-for-one golf offers, complimentary clinics, monthly special offers, and more. To purchase, visit TroonCard.com. Golfers, do you suffer from constantly... Welcome into Giants Post Game Live presented by Mercedes Benz, the official luxury automobile of the New York Football Giants. I'm Madeline Burke alongside Giants Super Bowl champion Sean O'Hara and Giants. Giants had the visiting Dallas Cowboys in town, fell 21 to 6. But Sean, if I would have told you coming into this game, 
that the Dallas Cowboys would only score two touchdowns in this game, you'd think that the Giants would have a, a pretty good chance, right? Yeah, I would have never believed you, no matter how many Pepsis I had to drink today because the Giants were giving them out for free, apparently. When you look at the Giants' defense, depleted, losing players due to COVID this week, it's been a trying week for the players and for the staff. But again, how many times have we stood up here after a game battle in this season and talked about how the defense played well enough to win, and yet the offense did not come to play? They didn't show up in the red zone. They couldn't finish drives. I mean, you're not going to win a lot of games when you have three interceptions, when you fumble the ball like Saquon Barkley did. And then when you turn over the ball on downs on fourth down, they went for it twice on their own end of the field, did not convert. This offense is just stuck in neutral, and, and that's the most disappointing part. And I know the defensive side feels like it too. They're playing their heart and soul out. Look, they got pressure on the quarterback. The Cowboys had, you know, they were without Tyron Smith. They moved Terrence Steele over from right side to left side. They had Connor Williams in there, left guard. So they were ripe for the picking, and the defense got some pressure. They got the ball out. They created some turnovers themselves, and the Giants just could never capitalize on that. They could never take control of the game, even though it was right there for them to grab it. Right, and the offensive struggles continue. Of course, Mike Lennon getting the start again with Daniel Jones still dealing with that neck injury. We did see a glimpse of Jake Fromm in the fourth quarter. Giants are dealing with a lot of injuries on offense as well. We saw Sterling Shepard carted off the field at late in the fourth quarter with an apparent leg injury. We will try to get an update to you if we get one before the end of the show. We'll keep you updated with all that we hear. Um, but Sean, you know, the red zone is still a point of struggle, not just the red zone, but also that time, the end of the first half. The Giants haven't been able to do much when they have the ball there. What is it about that late second quarter time that, that's just such a struggle for them? It has to be awareness, and I think as a player, look, coaches are t telling them and they're teaching them and coaching them on, look, the importance of that situation, and they're just not taking that, that, that education onto the field on game day. Look, Saquon Barkley's trying to make a play. I think in that moment, the fumble from Saquon Barkley, you give credit to Demarcus Lawrence for punching it out. That was a heck of a play by him, but it's been something that has transpired every single week. They give up points. They give up points right before the half, and that's a huge momentum um, aspect for both sides of the football when they're scoring points. Tough day to throw the football today, but it was obvious that the passing game right now, Mike Lennon struggled, not just throwing the football, but there were some struggles protection-wise. It was obvious the Cowboys wanted to attack the Giants at left guard again. They did that in week five. Micah Parsons, they Randy Gregory, and they were continually twisting and creating pressure. There was unblocked defenders, not just from Mike Lennon, but I tell you, it's frustrating. You could see Saquon Barkley on that fourth down when there was a, a, a false start penalty on Matt Parrott, the right tackle, visibly frustrated. And I don't blame him. How many times has Saquon Bar Barkley gotten the football on Madeline and immediately had to, had to dodge an unblocked defender? That should not be happening. Look, if it happens in the first four weeks of the season, you understand it. But that should not be happening in week 14. This is coming from a Super Bowl champion offensive lineman, ladies and gentlemen, so you got to take heed of these notes here. Now we got another perspective. We're going to send it down to the field for Brandon London and Paul Dottino standing by, fellas. Madeline, wind gusts up to about 30 miles an hour and a lot colder for the Giants after losing to Dallas for the ninth time in 10 tries, 21-6. to six. Few things we saw here from the sidelines. First up, Brandon, you're not going to beat the Cowboys when you settle for three in the red zone. Giants had a couple of penetrations inside Dallas territory to the 17 and to the 20 in the first half. Both times they settled for three, and that's why the Giants are dead last in the NFL in red zone conversions. You just can't do that. Absolutely not, Paul. And you wonder if it's a lack of aggression in the play calling or if it's a lack of execution on the player standpoint. But when you think about how the Giants had two of their biggest plays, two of their biggest runs on that drive, to come up with three against an offensive weapon like the Dallas Cowboys, it's unfortunate and puts the defense in a bind. One of the other things that really hurt this club, when you talk about the last two minutes of a half, the Giants have now been outscored on the season 65 to nothing in such situations. Now, Dallas wound up with two field goals at the end of the second quarter, sandwiched around a Saquon Barkley fumble. Yeah, you go from 
potentially being down nine to three going into the second half to 15 to three. And when we were talking about the Giants offense, whose identity identity is based around the run game, you don't want to go into the second half, especially with the ball, getting the ball in the second half down two possessions. It makes your defense play, have to play a perfect second half. Now the Giants defense tried to hold the water behind the dam, but they were just in such a yeah. difficult position the entire day. Now, at the time Dallas scored their second touchdown midway through the third quarter to make it 21 to 6. To that point, Dallas had an average field position of their own 40. The Giants, an average field position of their own 18, partially because of three turnovers and one fourth down failure by the Giants. Yeah, we talk about the Giants defense all year being a bend but don't break type defense. That's against a long field, making teams, making teams really fight for three points. They weren't able to do that because the both the time the Cowboys offense had a short field, they scored a touchdown. All right, Brandon, another tough one for the yep. New York Giants, but there's always another game next week. Madeline, back to you. Good stuff from Brandon as Paul and Paul as usual. Tough loss for the Giants, 21 to 6, falling to the visiting Cowboys. We've got a lot more to unpack in this show after the break. But first, a reminder that guests of our postgame show received a gift certificate to Ben and Jack's located on 44th Street in Manhattan. From the celebrated porterhouse to finer seafood, Ben and Jack's will surpass your expectations of what a steakhouse should be. After the break, we'll hear from Giants head coach and much more as Giants postgame live presented by Mercedes-Benz continues after this short break. We'll be right back. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Really? First, you'll see the past. Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> and then the present. And finally, Ebenezer, the future. Introducing the all-electric EQS. Happy holidays from Mercedes-Benz. With DraftKings Sportsbook's latest offer, new customers can bet just $1 on any NFL game and win $100 if any point is scored. A chip shot field goal, you win. A TD pass, you win. A sack in the offense's own end zone, thereby resulting in a safety awarded to the defense? Yeah, you win. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Sign up with the promo code. Bet $1 to win 100 if any point is scored. And make it rain with an official sports betting partner of the NFL. 90 years in the game. And counting. This is our house. We built this house. It wasn't easy. We got to rewrite the playbook. You got to have the right plays. That's how you do it. Who's the MVP? I am. Joe. She is. <laughs> Without me, this wouldn't exist. We got to bring everybody in. Because that's how we all win. I'll tell you, I loved every minute of my time playing for the New York Giants. It was a huge part of my life. These days, I still carry my team spirit with me. Every time I use my Giants debit card from Investors Bank. Open a New York Giants checking account from Investors Bank with free cell phone and ID theft protection. Plus, you can earn up to $250. Once a giant, always a giant. And now, I'm a fan too. Open a Giants checking account online today. The Hess Truck's back. It's a cargo plane and jet flying through the sky. This year, the Hess Truck's here. This holiday season, Hess gives you twice the high-flying action. The huge cargo plane has lights and a rear-loading cargo bay. Unfold the jet wings and take flight with button and motion-activated sounds. Free shipping and Energizer batteries included only at HessToyTruck.com. A tradition each year, the Hess Truck's here. Happy holidays from Hess. Google. 
first up, Miss Fox. Oh, just let it ride. Yeah. Chick Spins, you know who this is. Eric Coleman, what's up? This is the time. That's my short shot. New York, lock into that. How can we take the boys' money line? Jeff Johnson representing the Q Borough. Y'all never say I let my fandom get in the way of a good Let's bit. talk about the spread. There's entirely too much offense in this game for me not to take the over. Look, I think they're going to win, and I also think they can get the first touchdown. That is my prop bet. We're building our portfolio, money line spreads. It's time for you to get in your bag. And that's what we're doing here on the betting exchange. <laughs> Join us. Giants fans, we've got another giveaway this week. Enter for your chance to win a signed replica helmet by the human joystick, Kadarius Tony. Those helmets are pretty sweet. You might be enticed to wear it at your next backyard game. To score the helmet, just scan the QR code on the screen or go directly to msgnetworks.com. This week's keyword is joystick. Use it when you sign up for your chance to win and good luck. Welcome back to Giants Post Game Live presented by Mercedes-Benz. We are joined now by Giant Super Bowl champion Carl Banks, fresh down from the radio booth, calling today's yeah. game a tough loss for the Giants, 21-6 to to the Dallas Cowboys, Banks. Yeah, this was a game, and I heard you guys uh, on my way down, this was a game that was ripe for the picking. Uh, the Giants started off running the football well, uh, staying on schedule, and then just the normal things that we, it's almost like a song we have on repeat. They shouldn't do this, they shouldn't have done that, they have to do this better. Drop passes, offside penalties, can't stop a twist, which everybody runs. And then you have the emergence of the backup quarterback who becomes part of the reason you lose. And, and I can ask Sean, with a backup quarterback, he doesn't have to be the reason you win, but he shouldn't be the reason you lose. Is that like the philosophy that yeah. you take with a backup quarterback? Yeah, you don't have to try to win the race yourself. Just keep the car on the road yeah. and, and not turn the football over. Look, I think Mike Glennon, you, you know he's trying to make a play, trying to make a throw. But the interceptions, I mean, it's an underthrown ball. He's not even getting the ball to the receiver. Tough day to throw the football, no doubt about it. But, you know, you brought up the point about unblocked defenders. And, look, again, the Dallas Cowboys tried to attack the left side of the Giants offensive line. I thought Andrew Thomas played a good game. I thought that they attacked the left guard and we just, there, there's not an answer for that. Too many times you're asking Mike Lennon to stand in the pocket and then there's an unblocked defender, even right down to the, the final play of the game well, sure. on fourth down, we've got an unblocked defender. That should not be happening. Week 14, Carl, we, we gotta know yes. who's picked up. I don't care if the backup quarterback's in there. I don't care if Jake Fromm is in there. I don't care if Phil Simms is coming out of the stands. Yeah. You can't do that and you can't expect to win football games. And it is a broken record. And it, I know everybody's is. tired of hearing it. And you know, you talk about this twist play, right? And, and I'll give Matt Pert some credit. Now, he had a bad offside, but he held up rather good against Lawrence when they were all hunting for the quarterback. But the one thing that, that continues to baffle me is that they can run a fast twist or a slow twist, and they never seem to figure it out. And at this stage of the season, like you said, it's unacceptable. Like the last twist that they got, you can see it from the uh, exit away onto the New yeah. Jersey Turnpike. It yeah. was like, Okay, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to sit here, I come. And it's just like the guard just never picked him up. And I just don't understand how that continues to plague this offensive line. It's frustrating, and, and that's all communication and anticipation. You know, you got to yeah. see that. you got to be aware. Hey, look, this guy's cheating down here from the slot. What's going to happen? Well, guess what? He's coming, and the guy, the defense end slanting. So those are all things I know they're being coached up to do because Pat Flair is the assistant offensive line coach. He was my line coach, so I know exactly sure. that they walk through that. They walk through blitzes. They walk through stunts. The hardest thing for offensive linemen to do, Malin, is to block defensive players on the move, and that's exactly what they saw. Not just limited to pass protection, too, though. The run game. Correct. How many times did you and, you and Bob sit up there and see Saquon Barkley take the handoff, immediately have to dodge somebody? Mm -hmm. That's why he's so frustrated. You could see it visibly. I get it. Look, he had the fumble. That was a good play by Demarcus Lawrence. But visibly, he's frustrated because sure. he can't even get going. He can't and even get the speed going to cut it back or make a move. And when they got it going, you could see that the Saquon Barkley everyone's been waiting for post-surgery is back. He's got the bounce. The vision and his eyes and feet seem to be synchronized, but again, it just doesn't happen consistently enough. But on a more positive side, right? And I, I said I was going to look for things that were part of the foundation going forward. Guy like Lorenzo Carter, I was in conversation last night, actually on Twitter, and people were saying, "Was well, he a scholarship guy? Is he on?" I'm like, "No, no. When he's healthy, he plays hard." But I said maybe we should lower the expectations because he's playing to the level he's drafted when people were saying 
Well, he's better than where he was drafted. Well, today he showed you why people said that he was disruptive in the run game and in the as a pass defender. So if he can put some of those together back to back to back and not get hurt, then it gives you something to look for because he was strong on the edge. But as a pass rusher, he was really disruptive. And for Lorenzo Carter, too, you know, a lot of people will look at defensive ends and defensive players. Hey, what kind of sacks did they have? They want to see the sexy mm -hmm. stats. Look, what Lorenzo Carter does against the run, that goes unnoticed. Sure. And, and there aren't stats for, man, this guy bookended a tight end that's coming over. Or this yeah. guy just, you know, put a, put a guard two feet in behind the line of scrimmage. Yep. He's got great hands. He, he plays with great leverage. He's a very strong player. But defensively, they were spirited, and, and they were down some players. I thought Jalen Smith brought a ton of energy. Of course, he's sure. super motivated uh, to playing against his former team, but he was flying around out there and, and you know, just wasn't enough. Right. Yeah, Giants defensive put out a good effort today, but again, wasn't enough. As you mentioned, 21-6 loss to the Cowboys. We've got a lot more coming up after the break. We're going to hear from head coach Joe Judge and much more. You're watching Giants post game live, presented by Mercedes-Benz, the official luxury automobile of the Giants. At Yield Street, investment opportunities that have traditionally been reserved for only the ultra-wealthy are now available to you. With a single investment, the Yield Street Prism Fund gives you access to a portfolio of alternative asset classes. With expected 8% distributions paid quarterly, the Yield Street Prism Fund can help you realize your financial goals. Start as low as 1K and take your portfolio to the next level. truck of the NFL and America's best-selling trucks 44 years and counting right now get 0% financing for 60 months plus $1,500 bonus cash on the Ford F-150 the official truck of the New York Giants there's something in the air out of the silence it all starts now Pike's Peak, named after Zebulon Pike, who never made it to the top. Of course, he didn't own a sedan from our Sport Tune GT lineup. Well, Zebulon, this one's for you. Lease a new 2022 Forte LXS for $169 a month. Every day, nearly 2 million customers across New Jersey rely on PSC&G to provide natural gas. And every day, PSC&G is committed to doing it safely. That includes making sure you know what to do if you smell gas. A natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs. If you suspect a gas leak, leave your home immediately. Get far away, then call 911. Remember, smell, leave, call. Protect the ones you love. Learn more at PSCG.com slash gas safety. My mom. is the greatest city on earth. The toughest, loudest, proudest. Here's our shot at making it the healthiest too. Because of COVID-19, everyone needs to show proof of vaccination at work. Safe and free, get your vaccination or booster today. A fully vaccinated workforce makes a healthier workplace. What a wonderful world. 
Scoring drive of the game is brought to you by Investors Bank at the official New York Giants checking account only from Investors Bank. Visit InvestorsBank.com slash Giants for more info. We take you to the second quarter. Eight plays, 51 yards, took two minutes and 55 seconds off the clock. Capped off by that 42-yard field goal by Graham Gano. That's a wrap for your Investors Bank scoring drive of the game as we welcome you back to MetLife Stadium for Giants post game live and send it down to head coach Joe Judge who's addressing the media. All right, guys. Well, obviously it was a different type of week for us in preparation. Uh, I thought the effort of the team was what we needed, out, but obviously the execution was not. There were too many self-inflicted wounds today to go ahead and give ourselves a chance for success. We had our shots. We had some opportunities, but we got to make the most of them. You're not going to win a lot of games in this league with four turnovers. That's obviously something we preach and we work on consistently to make sure we eliminate. we got to make sure we eliminate the turnovers. Uh, too many penalties today. Uh, amongst a number of other things we had to clean up as a team. The focus and the goal going forward, same as always is. We had a game seven days from now. We had to come back in, prepare, and be a better team than we were today to have success next week. Being said, I'll open up any questions you have. And Dougie, the athletic. Hey, Joe, can you talk about the decision to uh, make the quarterback change? And, and I know it's early, but do you think Jake did enough to uh, earn the starting job if Daniel's not ready for next week? You know, well, we got to a point in the game, you know, I wanted to see what Jake could do, point blank. And we weren't doing enough, you know, moving the ball otherwise. So I want to make sure I had a chance to go ahead and see Jake. And that will obviously open up a conversation for what we're going to do this week. We'll talk about it as a staff. We'll make the best decision for the team. And I know it happened late, but any idea? And Shep just looked bad initially. I don't have a final diagnosis right now, guys. Uh, he's in there right now being looked at by doctors. At Lombardo, fan sided. Hey, Joe, um, kind of piggy piggybacking off Dan's question there. Um, why so late going to Fromm? It seems like the offense might have benefited from a spark earlier. Why wait until that point to, to make the switch? Yeah, I thought we had some opportunities with Mike in there, moving the ball. There were some shots we had. And then, you know, look, we thought the time. Go ahead and give Jake an opportunity. Go ahead and get him in there and play. So he got in there and moved the ball well and uh, did some good things. So, like I said, that will obviously open up the conversation in terms of what we're going to do next week against Philly. Ryan Dudley, New York Post. Five, two, one, just quick one. I'm sorry if I missed your answer to Matt there. Uh, did you think about putting uh, Jake in right there before the third interception from Glennon when you guys had the ball after that turnover? Yeah, we had had discussions about it on the headset of staff. I said, we'll give Mike one more drive and see what he can do right here. And uh, look, after that, I said, let's go ahead and get Jake in there. Okay, thanks. And then uh, receiver-wise, uh, at the end of the third quarter, I think you only had one catch from Slayton, Galladay, and Shep, and we know what a focus that has been for you. Yep. Why couldn't you get the ball to your receivers? You know, I'll have to go through the tape and kind of look at a lot of things. Obviously, there are a lot of plays that were called, you know, for the receivers in mind as, as main targets and focuses. So we'll kind of look at the tape and see why we couldn't get it to them today. Jordan Rana, ESPN. Hey, Joe. What do you, how do you explain, what do you attribute to all the mistakes offensively, the, you know, the false starts, uh, just the, the self-inflicted wounds, as, as you call them at this point of the season? Well, the turnovers, you know, obviously, you know, we made mistakes in how we're going, you know, pushing the ball down the field a little bit. Uh, in terms of the execution, we got to make some plays and make, you know, good judgment, good decisions. You know, we've got to make sure we have better ball security at the end of the first half uh, and not turn the ball over right there and put the defense in a position to have to go back on the field and play defense. You know, that being said, you know, we got to have better execution with it. Uh, the fall starts, you know, we've got to have better poise in there and better control. Uh, there's no nothing that makes that acceptable right there. It's not something we accept at any point in time, Jordan. So, again, I don't think there's any one reason for it. we got to make sure we clean that up right there and, you know, make sure the guys that are, you know, committing these issues that we put them through exactly what they need to do to correct it and make sure it never repeats again. And where do you see the, the frustration level with that group? I mean, it looked like, you know, on the fourth down where, you had the, the false start. You you could see Saquon and some of the other guys really just kind of seemingly have had it in, in regard in that regard. Well, look, we can't shoot ourselves in the foot. The entire team knows that. That's something we talk about ad nauseum. We work ad nauseum, all right, in practice. So when there's an opportunity to go out there and be aggressive and it's fourth and short and we feel we have a play that's dialed up, that's the right play, yeah, guys get a little, you know, frustrated when all of a sudden, you know, we do something that removes our opportunity to have that right there. In terms of as a team, I see these guys still sticking together as a team and working very hard, you know, pushing and rallying on through the finish of the game. I'm Rob, Newsday. Joe, you know, were you surprised at all by the um, uh, the loudness and the volume of the Cowboys fans in the building today? No, guys. I mean, look, there's a lot of Giants fans when we play in Dallas, too, so it's what the National Football League is. There's going to be fans from both teams at every game. 
you know, especially when you're in New York area, there's guys from all over the country, you know, fan bases from all over the country that are here. So that's, you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, secondly, uh, Leonard Williams, could you just talk about the game he, you know, he had just the, just in his snap counts, the, the fact that he was able to go out there and play. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, what, you know, Leo really pushed through a lot. I mean, Leo was hurting a lot this week, and there's a lot of things he was limited to doing in practice. We went out there and worked him out yesterday, you know, in terms of seeing if he could go out there. And our biggest question with him was, you know, can he go out there and protect himself, defend himself, and play effectively? And we knew it would be some pain, some limitations. He knew that himself. Um, you know, Leo had a big part in the decision of going out there and playing. I thought the guy gutted out, made a lot of big plays for us today. He did a good job, you know, as far as holding the point, you know, destroying the blocks, you know, creating some vertical pressure and opening up some games. You know, in the past for our stuff, there's a lot of things we'll have to see on tape in terms of going forward. But look, Leo's a tough dude. He puts the team first. He goes out there and he competes. You know, we knew it wasn't going to be an easy game for him in terms of what he was playing with. But, you know, both him and Austin Johnson were guys that were limited this week on the defensive front. We put him through the workout yesterday. And, you know, both guys, you know, made the decision to go out there and play for the team. Both guys went out there and gutted through a lot of stuff today. Bosch Schwartz, New York Post. Hey, Joe. Hey, Paul. Um, you went for it on fourth down uh, several times mm -hmm. in, um, you know, tough situations deep in your own territory. Yep. You got some, didn't get some. Yep. Um, you know, was that was that just a case where you felt like you needed to generate something on offense? You felt the defense was doing okay, and um, you know, you just needed to figure out some way to get some points going. Well, we had favorable looks, so you're not locked in absolutely having to go for it and all those just because you take the line right there. We always build in multiples that allows us to get out of jail free, as we say. You know, if you don't like the look, you can always go ahead and take a delay and punt the ball. Uh, we had the looks of one on both ones. We had the, you know, big play, all right, with Book down the side on the crack. And then we had uh, the opportunity for the sneak. We got to convert and execute that right there. It's a look we wanted right there. You look back on the tablet and you say, okay, that's why we're calling it. That's what we had it for. We just have to go out and we have to make sure we take advantage of it. With, with the sneak, you know, you like the look there. And is it more like you didn't get push up front or does Mike have to – He's a big man. Does he have to kind of just, you know, get a little more leg drive? Yeah, I'm going to look at the tape before I make any kind of, you know, final statement there, Paul. But obviously, we got to execute better. Thank you. And Doug in the athletic. Go with uh, with right tackle. I think Nate played the first, but there were six or seven series, and Matt played the last five. Was so that like a what was the reason for the change there? I guess we were just making sure both guys got playing time today. We're just kind of rolling our guys and getting the chance to look at everyone as we go on through it. Matt's practiced better. Matt's been out there and doing some good things. And obviously things got to clean up and keep taking steps forward. But uh, both guys, you know, I'd say all the time, we expect all of our guys to play. And that was just part of the plan. And the last drive in the first half with the Saquon's ones fumble, just like, what was the approach there? Because it seemed like you guys were being sort of conservative and but you, I mean, trying to move the ball. I was just trying to figure out what the approach was there. Well, you know, Dallas had timeouts on that. So you want to get the ball rolling at that point. You got to get the clock moving and not turn around and put yourself in position where the other team can go ahead and just get the ball back and finish the drive. Yeah, you know I mean, finish the half with the ball in their hand. So, you know, getting the ball moving, just starting to drive, get into it. We had timeouts to use as well. You know, I thought, you know, getting the ball to Saquon, start pushing on down, gave us, you know, a good start of the drive, good field position, you know, mixing in sub runs and taking shots down the field. You can call the end of half deals, okay? You can go ahead and call your offense to a good degree and plays you like right there. I thought the play selection, the column was good right there. Gave us an opportunity. We we're going to have plenty of time as far as pushing it and getting the field position and ending the half of the ball in our hands and a chance to score. So we got to make sure we go ahead and we capitalize better as a team. Last one here, Shar, New York Beacon. Hi. Uh, what is your overall comment on defense? Um, Dallas had mostly field goals. Um, defense was able to get a couple quarterback sacks. Yeah, look, I thought for the most part, you know, those guys went out there in some tough situations today all right, where they took the field and were able to hold them some field goals. You know, the end of the half, you know, off another turnover. I like the strip sack at the end of the game in a tough situation, setting our offense up with a chance to have it right there. There's things we got to fix in all three phases. All right, no one played perfect. I like the effort out there. There are a lot of moving pieces this week on defense with some of the injuries up front and obviously a lot of moving parts in the back end with DBs that were out of the game for different reasons. So... You know, that unit, you know, going out there and preparing on very, very short notice. I uh, really had about one walk through together yesterday as a team uh, to get ready for the game. So I was, I was proud of how those guys came together and played with good effort. But there's things we got to clean up. Okay, there's things we can't accept, you know, with execution or, or coaching decisions right there. So we got to make sure we all get on the same page. Uh, but I am proud of the overall effort that you guys play with. Thanks, Coach. You're all set. All right, guys. Appreciate it.
That sound from head coach Joe Judge was brought to you by Ford. One of the things uh, Judge did say that there is no final diagnosis yet on Sterling Shepard, who was carted off the field in the fourth quarter. We will keep you updated if we do hear anything while we are on the air. But another comment that I found interesting, Val, is that he made was, you know, seeing what he, what Jake Fromm could do when they put Fromm in in the fourth quarter. Uh, Coach Judge did say, you know what, that does open up a conversation about what we're going to do this week moving forward. Uh, what do you make of what you've seen from, from the young quarterback this week? Look, they put him in in a hurry-up situation. He was able to operate well. Now, a full game plan is a little different, but, you know, if you're running a two-minute offense, there are some set plays that you have, and two of them are drawing a screen, but he executed. He threw the ball well, so I think he should be considered for next week yeah at this point what do you have to lose you know I mean you're, you're looking for any kind of offensive spark what, yeah. what can produce some points and look if, if Jake is a little bit more mobile if he has a chance to maybe you know buy some more time get out of trouble with his legs then give him a shot to your point Carl the fact that he can run the two-minute offense look the kid's been here for you know three minutes yeah. so quarterback you've got to be able to understand the language the formation put it on a wristband if you have to but can he get them out of a bad play? If you sure. walk up to the line and look, this play is a disaster waiting to happen. Does he have the knowledge, the understanding of the offense to get you out of that play at the line of scrimmage? That's what he's got to master. Absolutely. We've got a lot more coming up on the show after the break. We are going to hear from the veteran backup, Mike Glennon, that and much more as Giants post game live presented by Mercedes Benz continues after this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. For the gifts you won't forget, the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event. Get a credit towards your first month's payment on select models. The Hess truck's back. It's a cargo plane and jet flying through the sky. This year, the Hess truck's here. This holiday season, Hess gives you twice the high-flying action. The huge cargo plane has lights and a rear-loading cargo bay. Unfold the jet wings and take flight with button and motion-activated sounds. Free shipping and energizer batteries included only at HessToyTruck.com. A tradition each year, the Hess truck's here. Happy holidays from Hess. At Yield Street, investment opportunities that have traditionally been reserved for only the ultra-wealthy are now available to you. With a single investment, the Yield Street Prism Fund gives you access to a portfolio of alternative asset classes. With expected 8% distributions paid quarterly, the Yield Street Prism Fund can help you realize your financial goals. Start as low as 1K and take your portfolio to the next level. You can sell things. Thoughts. Brought to you by Squarespace. Hidden talents. Your time. Your theory on reality. Motivation. And even the sound of your own voice. Squarespace is everything you need to sell anything. Road home for the holidays, where the ultimate driving machine becomes the ultimate cruise through three states machine. The ultimate zip around the corner for mom's cooking machine. And even the ultimate we couldn't get out of there any faster machine. Because at BMW, we know every holiday looks different. So we created the ultimate whatever your road home looks like machine. Hurry in to receive a credit of up to $2,500 through January 3rd. Today's game was presented by Stop and Shop, the official supermarket of the New York football Giants. Welcome back to MetLife Stadium for Giants post game live. The Giants fell to the visiting Cowboys 21 to 6. We now send it down to the podium where we'll hear from quarterback Mike Glennon. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I think uh, we'll have to take a look at the film. Felt like we ran the ball pretty well, um, self inflicted wounds. Um, you know, there's a couple times. We did move the ball well and then just ended up with field goals and then a couple of uh, kind of dumb decisions on my end, uh, you know, forcing the ball that were, uh, that were not good decisions. And can you describe what you saw in the, the fourth and one on the sneak? 
Yeah, uh, we saw an opening, um, and I, honestly, I, right when I got the ball, I thought we were going to get it, and felt like we got a little push, and then I looked over and, and could tell we were short. But um, I think that's that, that play happened so quick. Again, film will probably explain better, but. All right, Don, maybe. Like what that third intercept, the third interception in the end zone there when you guys are trying to make a comeback. What did you see there? Did you just short arm the ball? Uh, just kind of got flush out of the pocket. Um, I wasn't able to get my body all the way around, try to make a play. Um, you know, wasn't a smart decision to, to do when, you know, it's the, it's the guy that's leading the league in the interceptions. Um, trying to make a play and, and ultimately just couldn't get my body all the way into it. That sound from Mike Lennon was brought to you by Ford. But now we got to pivot and talk a little bit more of this defense, guys. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the show. But one of the things I want to mention is Aziz Ojolari, the young rookie. Uh, he had half a sack today, split one with uh, Quincy Roche. And as we look at his stats here, half a sack today puts him up to eight on the season. The names that he's on this list with, of course, I mean, yes, it's an individual stat. You'd want to trade that for team success if you could. Sure. But if we take a moment to just appreciate what this young guy is doing right here. Well, you know, and here's the thing about um, sacks in this 34 defense, right? People, people will look and say, well, he's not a dynamic. The Giants need dynamic pass rushers. They need dynamic playmakers. The fact that he's able to get eight sacks and he's probably going to get a few more before this is over with says that he's a core player in this defense. Now, a dynamic pass rusher could be a guy who's in a rotation. But a guy who can play every down in a, in a 34 defense because they're counting on to play the run and the pass, and he's an every down guy who's getting eight sacks, that's a good thing. But will they need an edge rusher at some point? Sure they will, but he may not be a starter. Yeah, the production is nice. And you know what? The funny thing about sacks is that doesn't even tell you about all the times where he beat his offensive lineman, but the ball went out. Sure. So, He's doing a great job with his hands. And look, coming out of college, I thought he had really good hands for a college player. Sometimes when they get to the NFL, they struggle with getting off blocks. They struggle with creating sure. that separation. It doesn't translate. For Aziz, it has translated. Look, he's going to continue to get better. And to your point, yeah, he might break that record before the season's over with. When you look at, at pass rushers, the growth that they get by just watching film, by watching what sure. offenses are doing, here's the tackles, learning their tendencies, finding out what they do wrong. Look, he's not the biggest guy, but he's done a great job of, I think, improving as the season's gone on. He has not hit a rookie wall. And the one thing that he's really learning how to do is to turn that speed rush into power. Yep. And that's where, look, even next year, he's going to be bigger and going to be stronger. I think he's going to be a player that the Giants can really count on on third down. Look, we don't have to bring a pressure. We don't have to draw something exotic up. We can get pressure with Aziz just beating his guy one-on-one. -on -one. And with these, tw you know, 12 men on the field penalties struggling to get um, substitutions in, when you have a guy like him, you never have to take him out. So the packages, you can just say, okay, you're staying in for four downs or for three downs or whatever it takes. Got to have that reliability. It's a good thing to have to, with a young guy on this defense. All right, we've got a lot more coming up on the program. After the break, we'll hear from Jake Fromm. That and much more on Giants Post Game Live presented by Mercedes-Benz. We'll be right back. Ninety years in the game. And counting. This is our house. We built this house. It wasn't easy. We had to rewrite the playbook. You gotta have the right plays. That's how you do it. Who's the MVP? I am. Sure. She is. <laughs> Without me? This wouldn't exist. We gotta bring everybody in. Because that's how we all win. Family. All in this together. Family. We're taking a chance. Some traditions just keep getting better and better. Ford F Series, the official truck of the NFL and America's best selling trucks 44 years and counting. Right now, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus $1,500 bonus cash on the Ford F-150, the official truck of the New York Giants.
trucks back. It's a cargo plane and jet flying through the sky. This year, the Hess truck's here. This holiday season, Hess gives you twice the high-flying action. The huge cargo plane has lights and a rear-loading cargo bay. Unfold the jet wings and take flight with button and motion-activated sounds. Free shipping and Energizer batteries included. Only at HessToyTruck.com. A tradition each year, the Hess truck's here. Happy holidays from Hess. Want to win some cash? It's easy, fun, and free with the MSG pick em app. Knit, hockey, baseball, and now football. Make picks before your favorite teams play, and you can make some serious bank. Every game is free to play, so you can't lose. Make picks, win big with the MSG pick em app. Download today. Pike's Peak, named after Zebulon Pike, who never made it to the top. Of course, he didn't own a sedan from our sport tuned GT lineup. Well, Zebulon, this one's for you. Lease a new 2022 Forte LXS for $169 a month. Giants fans, we've got another giveaway this week. Enter for your chance to win a signed replica helmet by the human joystick, Kadarius Tony. Those helmets are pretty sweet. You may be enticed to wear it at your next backyard game. To score the helmet, just scan the QR code on the screen or go directly to msgnetworks.com. This week's keyword is joystick. Use it when you sign up for your chance to win in this week's watch and win sweepstakes. Good luck. Welcome back to MetLife Stadium where the Giants fell to the visiting Cowboys 21-6. to But we've got an unfortunate update for you. Giants wide receiver Sterling Shepard was carted off the field late in the fourth quarter. The update is that he does have a torn Achilles. Guys, you know we've seen this injury in sports many times. It's a, it could be a year-long recovery. Uh, what's your immediate reaction to this one? It's unfortunate. And I think, you know, with Sterling Shepard, he's had so many leg problems since he's had his first one earlier this year from ankle to quad to hamstring. And it's just unfortunate. And for a guy at, at a skilled position, you know, that recovery can be a little tough. People are coming back from him. And um, Lorenzo Carter bounced back from his. But it's it's just tough. Yeah, it's, it, your heart goes out to Sterling Shepard. Yeah. And so we, yeah, taking a look at his numbers from today for the Cowboys, Sean. You know, he, he's battled so many injuries throughout his career. And, and, you know, you love the way he plays. You love the passion that he brings to the game. And it's a tough loss, not just, you know, for him as a player, but for him as a person. I know in the locker room and as yeah. a teammate, look, he's a leader. And, and it's not just the fact that he's been here the longest. I think it's it's really what he brings to the table. And, and you know, look, you, you think about Sterling Shepard, you think about receiving yards and what he's doing as a receiver. But this guy, he's he's always blocking on run plays. You see him down the yeah. field. I think back to the Washington game from a couple of years ago when he was the one springing Saquon on a big run. And we yeah. were showing that highlight over and over. And it's just his his want to is there. So he's one of those guys. You know, Sterling, we're, we're all thinking about you. We're, we're sorry to hear the news. Uh, we wish you a speedy recovery. It is something you can come back from. Yeah. You hope that it doesn't. You know, the Achilles, it's one of those things where it's, it's all about your acceleration. So you hope that you can come back from that and he can still have that quickness and that burst to get off the line because as a receiver, th that's really where he makes his head. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we have seen players, plenty of players come back from this kind of injury before, and we all are sending all of our best to Sterling Shepard as he takes on this journey as well. Now we'll send it down to the podium as quarterback Jake Fromm is addressing the media. Yeah, um, you know, obviously it was you know, really fun to get out there, um, you know, kind of check the list, check the box there a little bit, you know, get to complete a childhood dream and, um, you know, get to play an NFL game. Uh, it, was, it was awesome. Uh, just uh, the ability to go out there with the guys, um, you know, set of new guys, you know, I'm, I'm new and, um, and it was just, it was just fun. Um, and be able to get out and move the ball a little bit and, and try to compete and, and, you know, give us a chance to win there at the end. And Duncan. When did you actually find out you were going in? Like, had you been preparing earlier? Or did you just find out right before that drive? Yeah. I mean, I was just trying to stay prepared, you know, throughout the whole game, you know, um, you know, didn't know if, you know, I was going in at any particular time, just, you know, just trying to stay ready and, um, you know, they, they told me there late in the fourth quarter that, hey, you're up and just trying to get ready and, um, you know, trying to make something happen. They said on the broadcast, you know, like 60% of the offense by right now. You think that's accurate? I'm sorry, can you say that again? 
they said in the broadcast you've probably learned like 60 percent of the offense like you know, obviously you've only been here a couple weeks you think that's accurate the only you know i don't know uh you know it's tough to tough to say you know for me it's just understanding a, a week-to-week game plan um obviously you know there's there's carryover and you know there's stuff you take in and out um you know just for me it's hey let's go let's go learn a game plan let's go learn a you know 150 200 plays a week and um just go try to try to execute that sound from Jake Fromm was brought to you by Ford. After the break, we'll hear from running back Saquon Barkley. That and much more. Stay with us. We've got plenty more to come here on Giants Post Game Live, presented by Mercedes-Benz, the official luxury automobile of the New York Giants. This is more than a ball. And this is more than a beer. This ball looks like it was born to sit on the couch. But in the right hands, man, it can fly. And when you look at this pint, it looks dark and heavy. But take a sip, and it tastes light and smooth. And if there's anything this ball has taught me, is that if you look out for those around you, you will come back. We'll all come back. One thing we know for sure is things are always changing. So there are still reasons you may need COVID-19 testing. And Quest has options for the whole family. Available at no cost to you. Simply schedule a test online for a nearby location and get your test results back as soon as the next day. Millions of people like you have trusted Quest for their COVID-19 testing. So schedule your test today at QuestCOVID19.com. That's QuestCOVID19.com. With DraftKings Sportsbook's latest offer, new customers can bet just $1 on any NFL game and win 100 if any point is scored. A chip shot field goal, you win. A TD pass, you win. A sack in the offense's own end zone, thereby resulting in a safety awarded to the defense, yeah, you win. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, sign up with the promo code, bet $1 to win 100 if any point is scored, and make it rain with an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Here we go. All the best in sports. He's gone. Yeah, you've got it. He's gone. Time to celebrate. All your favorite teams. Just find your squads, and we'll do the recording for you, so you never have to sweat. Oh, this is going to be a big night. All the biggest games, we found them for you. Just tune to Channel 205. What a catch! Can't stay home? Take your games with you. And the most live sports in 4K HDR, including the most NBA games in 4K. Unbelievable! DirecTV, we do sports. DirecTV is bringing you a special holiday offer. Leave this to me. Get Epix free for three months when you upgrade to Movies Extra Pack. I think it's good to stand out. Experience all the wonder of the holidays. I could do it for a month. Unwrap gripping thrillers. Shall we begin? Charming classics. You'd be surprised. And riveting dramas. Get ready. We're going to war. Get Epix free for three months when you upgrade to Movies Extra Pack for just $4.99 a month. Only on DirecTV. Hey, Giants fans, check out the Eli Manning Show presented by Duncan. All you have to do to, is describe, subscribe to the Giants YouTube channel to catch the latest episodes and all of the Eli extras. Eli Manning Show presented by Duncan. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to MetLife Stadium and Giants Post Game Live. We now send it down to the podium where Saquon Barkley is addressing the media. He was asked about his teammate Sterling Shepard going down with an Achilles injury. Definitely tough. Um, you know, he's a spark to this team. He's a leader uh, of this team. Um, just the energy that, that he brings every single day on the field, off the field. Um, so anytime you see a guy go down, you know, um, it's, it's a sad thing. And, but one thing I know about Shep, he's a fighter um, and it's a, it's a setback, but I know he's going to attack this rehab and he knows that I know his family well. He got great fam family members. He got great friends. Um, great teammates, and he knows he can lean on a lot of other people uh, in a time of need. But like I said, uh, Shep, Shep is a competitor. He's going to attack his rehab and um, just a little setback. Um, but the comeback is going to be something special. Jordan? <clears throat> hey, Peg one. How do you uh, sort of make sense of all these injuries to, to you guys, especially, you know, I'm talking about you and, and the wide receivers in particular? No idea. Um, that's part of football, sadly. Uh, that's the that's game that we, we play. We're going to play as kids. It's a game that we love. Um, but, yeah, just bad luck, I guess you can say. And also, um, we saw you in the, the fourth, I think it was the fourth and one 
you guys had a false start. Obviously, the fr- you were frustrated after that. Uh, how would you describe your frustration level at this point? Um, I mean, everyone's upset that we lost. Uh, we, we know that's a pivotal play uh, in the game uh, that we got to convert <clears throat> to give us a chance to win the game. There's a lot of plays that uh, you know we had to convert to to give us a chance to win a game. Um, and we, we just got to execute and. We, we didn't do that on that play and, and other plays. We, we got to be better. I could be better myself. Uh, two minutes, having a fumble, can't can't have that happen. That's unacceptable uh, at all. You can't have that happen at all. Um, and there's just multiple plays that you know you can always go back and pick uh, that can change the course of a game. And you know we just got to be better as a team, as a staff on, on those plays. That sound from Saquon Barkley was brought to you by Ford. As we take a look at the rushing numbers from today's game, Giants fall to the Cowboys 21 to 6, but they got the ground game going a little bit. As you can see, Devontae Booker, 74 yards. Saquon Barkley, 50 yards on the ground. Booker had a couple long runs, especially that 21 or 28 yard breakaway off of fourth and one. Yeah. Yeah, two of the two of the Giants' three biggest plays of the game. And listen, I, I really like what Devontae Booker has brought to this offense. He's been decisive. He's got he gets vertical right now. There is no dancing around. There is no, you know, hesitation. He, he's running with power. He's very physical right now. It would be a nice one two punch if, if they could just get this thing going. And, and look, I, I don't I would not be upset, Carl. If they had just 40 carries, let's split them up. Let, let them both yeah. just eat. Yeah, I mean, that's what you really need when you have an offense that's struggling and you got a backup quarterback. Rely on the guys who can move the chains for you and minimize the exposure of a backup quarterback. Yeah, how about Saquon Barkley? I, I'll say this. Look, the stats aren't that impressive. He's clearly frustrated. He had one of the most unbelievable catches on that screenplay today. And, you know, it's a shame it's if like, the Giants win the football game, we're showing that play and we're talking about sure. it. Yeah. I mean, it was like it was like, it was like here. He just like snatched it right there, like yeah. almost behind him. Reached back. Like, he grabbed like just half of the ball, too. So, yeah. uh, you know, you see plays like that and you think, man, this guy's he, he's special for Saquon. They just they need to, to get him to like, get him clean, get him through yeah. the line clean yeah. and let him do his damage. You get him one on one with a corner with the safety. I think that's where we're, we're we're trending towards the Saquon of old, where he makes sure. that first guy miss. But you gotta gotta let him get to that first guy. Well, and it's also he is such a home run hitter too. It's like you know a shooter needs to see the ball go through the net a yeah. few times. He needs to just get that one breakaway, get get out in the open field, yeah. and get comfortable with what he can do. All right, we've got one final segment on the show. We'll be back here to wrap this one up on Giants post game live. Stay with us. Giants post game live presented by Mercedes Benz. We'll be right back after this. Pike's Peak, named after Zebulon Pike, who never made it to the top. Of course, he didn't own a sedan from our Sport Tune GT lineup. Well, Zebulon, this one's for you. Lease a new 2022 Forte LXS for $169 a month. gives you twice the high-flying action. The huge cargo plane has lights and a rear-loading cargo bay. Unfold the jet wings and take flight with button and motion-activated sounds. Free shipping and Energizer batteries included only at HessToyTruck.com. A tradition each year, the Hess Truck's here. Happy holidays from Hess. I'll tell you, I loved every minute of my time playing for the New York Giants. It was a huge part of my life. These days, I still carry my team spirit with me every time I use my Giants debit card from Investors Bank. Open a New York Giants checking account from Investors Bank with free cell phone and ID theft protection. Plus, you can earn up to $250. Once a Giant, always a Giant. And now, I'm a fan too. Open a Giants checking account online today. Reflect on the past, celebrate the future. Season's greetings from Audi.
First up, Miss Fox. Oh, just let it ride. Hey, <laughs> Jets fans, you know who this is. Eric Coleman, what's up? This is the time. That's my short shot. New York, lock into that. How can we take the boys' money line? Jenna Johnson representing the Q Borough. Y'all never say I let my fandom get in the way of a good Let's bit. talk about the spread. There's entirely too much offense in this game for me not to take the over. Look, I think they're going to win, and I also think they can get the first touchdown. That is my prop bet. We're building our portfolio, money line spreads. It's time for you to get in your bag. And that's what we're doing here on the betting exchange. Join us. Yeah, it doesn't get frustrating. It's just we got to be ready to go out there and make stops. Our job is to stop them. It don't matter where they get the ball. We got to stop them and hold them to no points or as few points as possible. Um, and we just didn't do that enough. We didn't make enough turnovers. We got to get the ball off of guys and just try to do our part to help the team win. Char. Hi, uh, two quarterback backs. Um, what was your motivation for today? Because it was the biggest rivalry. Yeah, I would say it was just to come out here and get a win. Um, my motivation every week is to come out, have a good week of practice, work hard during the week, and then come out here and play, execute game game plans. But I mean, it's it's just to try to come out, help the team as much as possible, and try to get a win at the end of the day. Uh, I think I just take a, a lot of pride in being a durable player and being uh, out there with my teammates. Um, knowing that they can count on me to be there. Um, I haven't missed a game my whole career. Uh, I think I missed one game in college, and it was because my coach, you know, purposely forced me to to take that that game off because I was playing through a, a shoulder tear I had in college, and he wanted to rest me like right before a Stanford game. And I don't know. I think I just uh, wanted to finish this uh, this year strong with my with my guys. Any other questions for Leonard? Leonard, how much did it bother you, the injury? Uh, I think in the beginning of the, the warming up process, I felt it in the beginning. And then uh, I think once the game started, it, it went away a little bit. I had a, a elbow brace on that helped me out a lot. And then, uh, you know, kind of near the second half, I was feeling it a little bit. And uh, they started rotating a lot more, uh, putting me in more situational downs to, uh, so that I can like, rest it when I could. But, uh, you know, I finished the game, and, you know, I'm most likely to play again for the rest of the year. That sound from Lorenzo Carter and Leonard Williams was brought to you by Ford. Um, but obviously, 21-6 to loss to the Cowboys, a tough one to swallow, but we got to move forward, move on, take a look at next week as the Giants are back on the road, headed to Philadelphia to face the Eagles. Sunday, December 26, 1 p.m. The Eagles are going to be on a very short week. Of course, their game against Washington postponed until Tuesday. Sure. Um, so what's your immediate reaction looking at this game, not just the matchup, but with the circumstances as well, Carl? Well, I don't, I don't have any sympathy for the Eagles. I mean, um, they, this is what it is. I, I do have sympathy for what they're going through in terms oh. of their, their their COVID stuff. Yes. But the short week and them whining about it when, you know, it's just what it is. You know, like the Giants had to miss out on opportunity because they made decisions, you know, uh, at their quarterback position and the Giants missed the playoffs. But I do sympathize with them in terms of their players and the health and safety protocols. But it's an inconvenience. They got to play the game and we'll see what happens. I mean, look, for, for Giants fans, the opportunity to sweep the Eagles is huge. I mean, we beat them right here a couple weeks ago, 13 to 7. Um, I think the Giants defense played really well, so they've got to continue that. They got a lot of turnovers. They harassed Jalen Hurts. Obviously, he'll probably be back, um, you know, if he makes it through the game on Tuesday. But you know, look, for the Giants, they've got to find a way to score some points. And the Eagles defense, look, it's always a physical game. Anytime you play the Eagles, sure. you play the Cowboys. You know that it's a, it's a battle of the trenches, so they're going to have to step up their game. They're going to have to find a way, whether it's with Jake Fromm, whether Mike Glennon, somebody's going to have to find a way to score some yeah. points. Yeah, and Joe Judge earlier in the show, we heard him kind of open up. We don't know which direction we're going to go. I think we're going to see what this week says, so to see if we have Mike Glennon or Jake Fromm getting the start next week against the Eagles. But you guys are well familiar with the fact that, you know, it is a rhythmic thing, so kind of playing on a Tuesday night is something that's going to throw Eagles out of rhythm. But again, the Giants can only control what they do. Correct. So if you're looking at this Giants team, what is one point of emphasis you want to say, you got to get this thing right next week against the Eagles? Execution, simple. The effort's there. They just got to execute. Got to handle the front. Look, the, the Eagles have, have a very good, very strong defensive line. 
They've got to handle things up front, figure things out, find a way to get positive yards on first and second down. First second, and it's always a division game. There's always that that effort, yeah. that want to, that passion in a division game. Playing in Philly as well. Yeah. That's going to be something. What's your memory? In one word, how would you describe what it's like playing in Philly? Hostile. Hostile? Passionate. There you go. Well, we got a lot to look forward to with that game. Division rival NFC East matchup is always a good time, and we will be here with more Giants post game live after that game as the Merry season Christmas, comes everybody. out to an end. Merry wishing Christmas. you all a Merry Christmas for Carl Banks, for Sean O'Hara, Paul Tatino, Brandon London, our entire crew. I'm Madeline Burke. Thanks so much for watching and hanging with us today. Uh, for Phillies and Mayors 3 and up, which have never won $10,000 twice other than maiden claiming starter, wavy claiming starter or state bred, or which have never won three races. And we want to welcome our viewers on MSG Plus who are coming in to pick up some of this action. This is Trackside Live, and that is a live Trackside look at the fairgrounds in New Orleans. We're going to have some Chicagoland racing with Hawthorne joining us, and then 